Dear friends, you are welcome to the DTU studio. In today's episode of Rubru, I bring you face to face with Mr. Sharad Sharma. Mr. Sharad Sharma, co-founder, Spirit Foundation. Sharad Sharma has over two decades of experience in the internet enterprise, software and infrastructure markets, and is a prominent voice in India's entrepreneurial ecosystems. So, Mr. Sharad Sharma, here you are with us in our DTU studio, and uh, you have been a student of DCE, then DCE, and today DTU, mm -hmm. and uh, pass out from 1986 batch. Mm -hmm. It's been a long journey. It's been time a long, long flown. journey. I don't know where the time has gone. <laughs> I can't believe it's 33 years. Looks like yesterday to me. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, but I've been, uh, I've been very privileged. I think the grounding that I got here uh, helped me a lot. And I was part of a whole wave of things that was happening. I was able to get in early and then do things that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And I optimized for that. And uh, so I had fun all along the way. So I can't believe 33 years have gone by and I'm still charged up and raring to go. I have many, hopefully many, many more years inside me. And uh, so that's, it's, very, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be back And uh, mm. you were also chairperson of IEEE when you were a student. Yes. And uh, you also introduced that mini computer uh, yes. Club. Yes, yes. And, Isn't and it? The, I'm very grateful to Professor Kundu, who used to be our head of department at that time. He was a in, tremendously encouraging uh, person. He used to nurture people. I was one of his, uh, I was one of the beneficiaries because he sought to bring out the best in everybody. And uh, so I, you know, I, we created something called the IEEE uh, Microcomputer Club. Okay. And we got uh, some Epson computers as gifts. And we essentially took them apart. We understood the operating system. It used to be the CPM operating system. That led me to Unix and many other things in my life. And uh, so I have very fond memories uh, of that. Uh, okay, uh, rather than talking all professional things, I would want to know from you, uh, any funny moments you had when uh, you were a student or uh, say any crisis? You know, oh, there were a lot. You know, college life is lots of fun. And I, I, there are many moments that were there. I, in fact, in the final year, I was part of a group of people who also stood for elections. Okay. And uh, although I didn't stand for elections, I was part of the team that was standing for elections. And our candidate lost by four votes. Oh. So when that happened, hmm. first we were gloomy because it was only four votes. <laughs> but then we were thrilled because losing by four votes is credible losing. Credible and losing. you don't have all the responsibilities of winning. <laughs> so we went and had a party. And our party was better than the winning camp's party. And I remember that created a lot of consternation. Uh, uh, what is this? <coughs> lost and they're still having a lot more, lot more fun. So, I, I, you know, college was a delightful period of growing up, experimenting with things. And that is a stage when, yes. when you can still enjoy your failures also. Yes, exactly. I mean, in life well it said. becomes different. Yeah, but as students, as youngsters, that's what the student community, you know, uh, overall when we are on the student campuses, yes. that's what it teaches us. We can experiment, experiment and experiment. Right. Uh, and we have no fear of being a failure. Absolutely. Because we will be a... Uh, success because we are a learner. Absolutely. We learn from those Absolutely. failures. Yeah, very well That's it. Uh, you're coming here for the first time or no, you have no, been here? I, a few years back I came. I've been involved in some of these entrepreneurial activities that oh. a college has been doing. Okay. And I came uh, and then there was I think a team that was competing for a NASA drones project oh, oh, yeah. and oh. uh, at that time I had come to, to, okay. to see what they were doing. So I have been occasionally involved and occasionally uh, involved. Uh, so, uh, so I'm happy to be back again. Mm, you know, we have more than 95 societies, yeah, student yeah. societies, yeah. Yes. and uh, and they are all active societies. And then we have four, five, five councils. Right. Like we have a cultural council, then we have a techno council, then we have a sports council, then we have a literary and film council, and then a students council. Right. And, and these are very important because if you go back and look at the recent history, you can see that almost in all cases, hobbyists become businessmen. Mm -hmm. So if you, I mean, I worked for many years in Yahoo, for example, and so David Philo and Jerry Yang, they, for them, Yahoo was a hobby before it became a business. 
the Google. Google was a science project before it became a business. Mm-hmm. Right? I can go on and on and on and give you many examples where essentially what happens is you start with a sense of a hobby. Mm-hmm. In fact, many people, there are books written on this that the most famous club in human history mm-hmm. is perhaps the Homebrew Computer Club. Oh, okay. The Homebrew Computer Club was in Silicon Valley and it mm-hmm. was to deal with how to build these computers out of microprocessors and these were Commodore, Sinclair, Atari and so on and so forth. <coughs> but why is it the most famous club? Because two big companies came out of that, mm-hmm. Microsoft and Apple. Mm-hmm. But they were essentially at in the beginning hobbyists. Mm-hmm. So this kind of an activity that happens in the college is very important, right? Because out of this sometimes emerges things that can change society in the future. Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy to hear that this is a vibrant (laughs) kind of a phenomenon here. Yeah, DTU is a very vibrant university and uh, with so much of 12,000 students on the campus and a vibrant campus with lots of festivities because uh, our objective is to give them exposure all sorts of exposure that could be given to a student right. that should be provided here. Right. And secondly, you have been like CEO of Yahoo R&D and that's really a matter of pride for our uh, alma mater and we are really proud of it. And sir, how about your family? So I have only one daughter. She okay. is now doing her neuroscience. She's an undergrad student. Okay. She's going to go to her final year and, uh, uh, and I'm... I'm kind of, uh, you know, today, in today's world, if you tell children something to do, there's a good chance they'll do the opposite. opposite. So I kept my trap <laughs> shut and I said, you do whatever you want. And she wants to become a scientist and uh, she's on her so own. So did, did she fall in the trap? No. That I, you didn't tell her to I, do something, I, I, but I, she did what you wanted. I, I, I'm going to get into trouble for what I say now. <laughs> but uh, but my, 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 my own view personally, and this is the first time I'm saying it publicly, <laughs> and she's you know, probably one day going to watch this, is that because I kept my traps shut and I didn't say you should become X and Y, she probably chose to become, be in the research area. Because my career has been essentially in research and development all through. And so, so hopefully some of it, I would like to believe some of it rubbed on to her and she'll become a good researcher. So that's why. That's it. That's it. That's so wonderful, in fact, (laughs) that you're doing parenting and while parenting, you want something to happen and you don't say, but it happens. So, I mean, yeah. it's a bumper draw of life, in yeah, fact. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sir, I mean, like, uh, you have been uh, your student a long time back, and then you have a long journey of your success. Uh, anything you would want to convey to our students, I mean, how creatively or vibrantly they should be moving, or what narrative or thought processes they should be carrying, so that they come out uh, happy, contented and achiever? Yeah, so I, you know, because of my own personal journey and especially related to college, I have, I I think adversity shaped my career and I think uh, one of the attitudes that becomes very important for young people today is to be able to use adversity as a gift. So I will give two examples that relate back to my college life. So okay. first, you know, in December, seven days before my seven semester exam, I had a big scooter accident and I broke both my legs oh. and I was laid up uh, for a long time. And then the question was, will I be, will I lose a year or will I pass in time? And I eventually appeared from the hospital, right? And uh, now luckily for me, I had built up some goodwill <laughs> inside the college and the whole <laughs> college was very supportive. supportive. And I, as I look back now, uh, you know, essentially almost you know, 33, 34 years later, because this was in 1985, I feel that that has become a scar that I treasure the most, right? Because that adversity can leave you weaker or it can leave you stronger, Stronger. right? And in this case, because of variety of factors, my family, my friends, you know, the friendships that I made in college, which are still intact and thriving, uh, were very important. In fact, my group of friends took a decision that there shall never be a day that some of them will not visit me. So even during the seven semester exams and otherwise, mm-hmm. I always had somebody who would mm-hmm. come and visit me every day. And I'm extremely grateful for that. And so therefore, a f- set of things helped me turn the switch and emerge stronger because of that. I have also only shared this never on camera, although in some public sessions, 
that my journey of being in DC is also very unique. So I have very high myopia. Mm -hmm. It used to be well above minus eight in both my eyes. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there used to be a medical test for mm -hmm. engineering. And okay. the test was the same standards at UPSC. And by UPSC standards, I was medically unfit. Unfit. <laughs> okay. So the question was, so I was, I couldn't do a government job anyway. anyway. I wanted to be an engineer, mm -hmm. but engineers, engineering required this. But the rumor was that there were only two places where the medical test didn't happen. One was DCE and the second was Roodkey. Okay. Now this is pre-internet, so there was no way to confirm this. So I, my focus was to get into these two places and I did get into both. And, 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 but I joined college. And, but there was a stupid thing I was told to go and ask the admin office, do you have a medical test? Because if you ask them, they will say yes, yes. and then there's problem. <laughs> so I was not supposed to do that. So I, as a backup, I, I said, what, supposing they do a medical test and I get kicked out, what should I do? So I must have some backup thing. So my backup thing was that I will do philosophy honors. So, so I had signed up for philosophy honors in Hindu college and, and engineering for DCE. <laughs> and uh, what a and I escaped. I and I, I I escaped ragging in both places because I had the card for the other place. But more importantly, I think that ended up being very useful for me. And I today give talks mm -hmm. that we must teach philosophy to every AI engineer, oh, right? Because it has become a requirement. Because mm -hmm. in the old times, humans, each one of us, uh, let's say we were driving a car, we would make our own philosophical decision. Oh, oh, no. You know, if if we have to. You know, we are in a situation where we hit an old person here and a, and a young person there. What should we do? It's mm -hmm. a dilemma. It's a philosophical it's a dilemma. dilemma. Yeah. But we have never solved that philosophical dilemma as a society by delegating it to every individual to solve. Okay. But now an AI engineer is solving that because in a driverless <laughs> car, that algorithm will be solving it. So an AI engineer, either in the area of driverless car or in the case of health or even in the case of education as AI becomes central to what we do. We need those engineers trained on those philosophical questions. And those philosophical questions have to be embedded in the algorithms that we make. So it's kind of a coming together of both things. But that is my secret in a way for being here in DC, my eyesight. And, uh, and, uh, and, and so my message to everybody is there will be adversity in life. That is the purpose of life. Life is never meant to be a straight line. And, and the question is, do you bounce back? Are you resilient? Are you like a tennis ball which can bounce back? You shouldn't be like a tomato so that when it hits the floor, it splashes, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's something that we can learn in our early years because mm -hmm. what we learn in our early years will stay with us all through our life. Oh, yeah. And college and school are good times to learn. That. Good times to learn. It was so nice of you. I mean, it's such an interesting thing, interesting talk, in fact, you have conveyed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sharad, for being with us in the studio. And uh, please remain connected. Our students are really wonderful, and we are proud of our students. Yeah, I'm, I'm privileged to be part of this. Thank you, sir. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.